<laughs> Hello everyone, yes we found the lions, give me a second, everyone's excited now And they're just trying to get hold of me on the radio uh, Go ahead taxi, I'm located on the Nkuma Pride um, we on that little link from Gallego shortcut that heads up to um, to Buffalo Zook Cutline Yes, we found them. Hey, look at that. <laughs> I must have um, Not that far. If you, if you head down that link, you know where it, it, it curves and it cuts almost directly, um, directly northwest again um, before it leads up to those little mud wallows. And um, we're just, uh, just to the east of that. This is wonderful. I'm just going to move a little bit forward quickly because I want to show you the rest of the pride. Um, oh, this is wonderful. I haven't seen the Nkuma pride for ages. Oh, hold on. They're all tucked in there trying to stay warm. It's not that cold, but um, there are some little ones hiding in there too. Can you get them through there? That's lovely. Hold on. Get a nice view of them for you. Look, Izzy, you say, look at the pretty girl, beautiful female um, of the Nkuma pride. And look at that. Look at them all huddled together there. All the faces of the lions. <laughs> Doesn't that look cozy? Oh. Well, like I said, <clears throat> oh, it's lovely to see them. I'm so glad we found them. You see, just like I, I thought that um, that um, a, uh, the bush eventually will will just uh, produce for us, and it has. And we were scanning, we were driving very slowly. I said to Fergus, I was like, I'm sure we're going to find these lines in this area. And Fergus spotted the line, it's just off the side of the road. And uh, the rest of the pride is lying just in that little thicker area. Look at this. Oh, really wonderful to see some lines again. And as I said, I'm just so excited because I haven't seen this pride for quite some time. Now, apparently there is one lioness that has got uh, a little cub, so I'm looking out for it, I'm hoping to see it. I wonder if it is with the pride at the moment, I'm sure it is. Maybe hiding in there somewhere. Okay, you said you'd like to climb right in the middle of those lions. I don't know if that would be a very good idea. Um, with those youngsters around, those lionesses would be very protective over them. But it does look cosy, I know what you mean. It looks very comfortable and cosy. Uh, excuse me a second. Good morning, Chat. It's Byron. Go ahead. Copy that hat. At this stage, the animals are, are lying down um, uh, flat out at the moment. And I know Texan and I think Aubrey are making their way in here. We'll give you uh, we'll give you an update as soon as we move out. Um. <laughs> Ellen, you say it's a blanket of lions. Oh does look like it, doesn't it? Oh, that's a wonderful view of them. Now these lions would most likely have been moving around during the course of the evening and um, I'm not exactly sure where they were before. I don't know if they saw them yesterday um, but they have come up from the northern or just north of us so from the Biffles Hook area they've come down here so they've most likely been moving around quite a lot possibly trying to hunt. I'm not sure how hungry they are. Um, doesn't look like they they really well fed, so lions are always opportunistic. They would try and hunt when they are moving around, but now because they've been moving around for a few hours, it's 
that's a great time to rest a little bit. I do think that these lions may decide to get up at some point and move again. Now, while the morning is still very cool, um, but we'll see. We'll spend some time with them and just uh, work out exactly what their plan is or if they end up hanging around here for the day and moving later this afternoon. That would be lovely too. Hopefully we'll get to see them again this afternoon. I'm sure we will. And even though these lions look so peaceful and so relaxed and sleepy, they are still completely alert and aware of what's going on around them. That's a beautiful picture. Isn't that great? <laughs> uh, this, this has made me very happy. I know a lot of you are, are itching to see that little cub that um, the one lioness has. I can't see any sign of a little cub just yet, but that's why we'll spend some time here and see. Perhaps it is lying in there somewhere or behind the lions. There was another lioness at the back. So I'm hoping that little cub is around. Robert, um, you are correct. Uh, this is the pride that has the lioness in it that is known as Amber Eyes. Um, now, I still um, struggle a little bit with uh, with identifying. I haven't seen this pride enough times to really identify Amber Eyes, um, but but she is part of this pride, and I think she is the one. If I'm not mistaken, that lioness is the one that has got the cubs at the moment. So, um, I think, uh, yeah, hey, Fern, make your way straight in. I think, uh, she is here somewhere. I just, but like I said, there's one or two, one or two lionesses lying at the back, just behind that clump of lions. Some of the other guests are going to join us soon. So hopefully they'll be able to get a view of them. Daniel, you're 13 years old. Good morning, Daniel. Well, from South Africa, at least. Good morning. Um, you asked who would win a fight between a lion or a leopard. Well, Daniel, um, it would most likely be a lion because a lion is just much larger than a leopard. And both cats are very, very powerful. And a leopard is probably, I would say, um, pound for pound, the strongest of the two. Um, of the two cats, but I think purely from the size, a lion would most likely win, although leopards are very agile and very, very powerful. Uh, I'm going to see if we can reposition a little bit and try and give everyone else a view of these lions too, shortly. So Stanley, you asked why the lions need so much sleep compared to some of the other animals. Well, Stanley, the thing is the lions the lions are, are clever, actually, if you think about it. And I say this because the lions conserve their energy. So when they, when they need to hunt or need to move around, they've got enough energy to do so. Now, in winter, Stanley, lions will move around a lot more because the temperatures are much cooler and it's 
more pleasant for them to move around in the cooler conditions. That's why lions generally move a lot um, at night, with the cool temperatures, and also under the cover of darkness, it's easier for them to hunt. So that is why the, the lions would conserve their energy during the day and then move around a huge amount um, or huge distance at least at night. So if you think um, if you think of us now when we fast asleep at home, these lions are moving around. So that's uh, that's the difference. So they prefer to rest during the day. I see that lioness cleaning and grooming herself a little bit. Miss Sky, you asked who can run faster, a leopard or a lion. So the charging speed, now we learn about the charging speeds of these animals. Look at those paws. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful lion paws. Um, so the charging speed of a lion is about 20 to 22 meters per second. So that's really, really fast. But a leopard is slightly faster the charging speed. Now they can't keep up those speeds for long distances. Um, and, you know, a cheetah could probably run top speed of about 110 kilometers an hour. What's that, about 60 miles an hour um, for about 100 to 200 meters or so. And then they usually um, heat up quite quickly. But lionesses, or lions at, at least, um, can run a bit further, but they won't keep a, a, a big speed up. Their charging speed is more of the, when they launch their attack and try and stalk and hunt animals, and that will be 20, 30, maybe 40 meters, that's it. So that'll be a short burst, very quick pace, um, but the leopard is slightly quicker than a lion. Look at that. That's such a wonderful view of this lioness. Angie, all the way from Wisconsin, you commented on the white under the eyes, and you wanted to know if those are the um, are those made to look like eyes when they are sleeping, so that it keeps other animals away. No, Angie, not at all. The main reason for those that white coloration, and you can see it very clearly under the under the eyes of that lion, is um, is it is there to reflect light to the eye, especially at night. Now their nocturnal vision is far better than ours, so the reason for this, um, for those white markings, is to to reflect light to the eye, to allow their vision to be even better at night, mostly at night. So that is the reason for those um, white markings under the eye. I look at that. Really, really lovely. All right. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to maybe try and reposition here slightly, and then um, uh, let's get back to Tristan and just see how his morning is going, and we'll see you all shortly again. Well, they're just grooming themselves at the moment, Tristan. They're still really enjoying that little position that they're in there nice and sheltered with the tree behind them but actually there, there isn't much wind around this morning not like last night it's definitely died down completely so they've got, they're very comfortable where they are so Alison, the easiest way for us to tell if it's a male or female is obviously by the manes 
Um, the, the males have got manes around their necks or on their heads, the big older males especially. The females don't have that. Now, in a pile like this, it is difficult to sometimes distinguish between each individual. Um, it would also be harder with the younger lions, Alison. So the young lions that haven't developed male uh, manes yet, um, you might start seeing little tufts of hair forming at about a year and a half, two years old. You'll see little tufts of hair, um, even even earlier than that, about a year old, you start seeing little tufts around the neck and the ears and the head of, of the young male lions. Um, but as you said, in a pile of lions like this, it's not always easy to see the youngsters, which are male and female. That does look like a young male, actually, that little one over there. This looks like he's got little tufts of hair around the head already. So the start of that mane, that beautiful mane. Now, in different areas, the manes can can be really impressive. Uh, we've got uh, the Birmingham males that we see around here a lot. They've got beautiful manes. Uh, just came from the Kalahari, and they've got lions up there known as the Kalahari black mane lions. Beautiful dark black manes. And we did get to see some of them. I think it's purely based on the area that they're in. Um, occasionally, genetically, some lions would just be darker than others. A friend of mine actually just saw a white lion yesterday in the area known as the Timbavati, just north of where we are. Um, and it, it's a, a, um, a slight recessive gene that does occur within lions, and especially in that area. And they saw a beautiful white lion Oh, look at that. See the interaction between the lionesses? As I said, you know, then we might get some more movement around them. It is still very cool. Look, it looks like the whole pride is starting to get up and move around. So let's see. One lioness moved off. Let's see if the rest of them follow her. see that interaction that those lions constantly grooming one another those two lionesses right at the back there you can see they were lying very close to each other now Siberia Zumi you asked if I've ever seen a lioness that has a mane and I have actually Siberia Zumi there's a lioness that was quite well known in the in Botswana in the in the Delta and um, and this lioness um, I, we don't know what it is uh, again genetics or, or, or testosterone levels and that but this lioness actually did grow a mane and I did see her I did see her once on safari about two three years ago um, we did see this lioness it is really really unusual I've never seen or heard of a lioness in this area in this Kruger area with a mane but I wouldn't be surprised if it has happened in the past somewhere. But um, yes, in Botswana we did. Uh, there was a lioness. I think there were actually two of them um, over the last ten years. I think there's been two lionesses that have been seen in that area with manes. Now that obviously has caused confusion before with um, with the other male lions that have come into the area. They see this big lion and they think it's immediately think it's potential competition until they pick up on the scent and then they realise it's a female. But I think she did. Um, and get into quite a few scraps until the males realised that it was indeed a female and not another male. <laughs> Soraya, uh, the, the lions do um, occasionally cough up a bit of hair now and then. Um, because they're constantly grooming and their tongues are incredibly um, uh, rough. They've got very, almost a barbed tongue is probably the best way of describing it. Little tiny hairs um, on the tongue and the, those tongues are so, so rough. You'll often see it. The best, best example I can give is when they um, 
feeding on a carcass. You'll see how these lions will lick a carcass and they'll often lick away some of the hair and open up the skin of the carcass that they're feeding on with those rough tongues. Now that, when they're grooming themselves, will also obviously then result in them pulling a lot of hair off themselves. So yes, they do cough up some hair from time to time. And occasionally you'll also see a lot of hair in their dung. I see they focused on something. Let's just see what they... Little one nearer. Asked how many lionesses I can see now. Now, one, two, three, four. I think I see four or five. I think it's five that I can see. Uh, one. I can't see that's a one, two, three, four. I think it's four that I can see, folks. Can you see any others? Big lionesses. Now, again, with this pile of lions, it makes it a bit difficult. But no, I get five. have you got five too? Okay, so yeah, I think it's five lionesses. Now, I haven't seen this pride for quite some time, as I said, and I only got back the other day, but I haven't seen them for two months or so. Um, so if any of you have seen them recently, how many lionesses are still within the pride, if you can let me know? I'm curious, but I think we can see five lionesses at the moment. And I think that's right with the Unkuhuma pride. Oh, hardly. Lions would probably hunt any time of the day. And I say that because they are very opportunistic. Oh, look at that big yawn. The yawning is often a sign that they could potentially start moving around. Let's see if the others follow. So hardly lions, as I said, will hunt any time during the day, day or night. They are very opportunistic. So if there's a chance of them getting food, they will they will indeed hunt. They prefer hunting at night though, because under the cover of darkness, it's easier for them to stalk and ambush their prey. But it's not to say that they won't hunt during the day. Lions often hunt during the day, mornings, afternoons. I've even seen lions busy feeding on a carcass and another wildebeest has run past and they've got up and tried to hunt that. So if the opportunity is there, they will take it because they don't know when their next meal is going to be. So it all depends if the conditions are right. Are they able to stalk? And can they get a bit closer? Uh, so Siberia Zumi, thank you. So it's, uh, there's the five lionesses in the pride and then seven youngsters, seven cubs. So we have definitely seen five lionesses here. Uh, well, both Fergs and I counted five, so I hope we didn't make a mistake. That's, that's the maximum I can count. <laughs> And we'll see if we can count. And we'll see if we can count some of the cubs. Now, while I do that, <laughs> well, good luck with those buffalo, Tristan. I hope you find them. Now, there's a little bit of activity, but the, one or two of the lionesses just moved off a little bit and lay down again. Um, so I'm hoping they do stay in this area. And let's sit here a few more minutes, and then we'll make space for some other other vehicles to come in and have a view of these lions. We've had such a lovely sighting of them, so nice to see them again. And dear watcher, you said it looks like the lions need to eat. Yeah, well the, the lions, you know, on average will try and hunt once every three days or so. Um, that, that I would say is an average, but again, going back to how opportunistic they are, we've seen this Nkuma pride in the past, hunting a buffalo every day for two weeks. So if the opportunity is there, they will do it. But generally two or three times a week, if they can feed, that's good for lions. 
Also, depending on the size of the prey, so there are a lot of factors that need to be considered. I've managed to count the pride, and I think all seven youngsters are here with uh, the five females. I just haven't seen that young cub now. I wonder if that those seven include um, that young cub. By the looks of it, I don't think so. Mary, Mary, you asked how big the canine tooth of a lion is. Um, it's about, well, I'll have to show you, canine teeth of lions can get to about that long, that length, depending how much is actually seated in the in the jaw itself, but probably about that long, if I can show you, yeah, about that. They have long, big teeth, really big teeth. Um, some of the males might even be slightly longer, but big, big teeth, long, long, sharp canines. So I don't know what that is in, I mean, if you use centimeters or inches, what's that, two inches? What, what is that? Inch, two inch? I don't know. Um, inch, inch, 25. <laughs> we, we don't know. It's probably about two inches. 10 centimeters, you know, 15 centimeters. What? What do you think? <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, what's that? I think that's about seven. Seven centimeters, yeah. Seven centimeters, maybe. <laughs> six, six or seven centimeters, maybe. I don't know. See, we get very confused sometimes with all these measurements and changing from centimeters to inches to millimeters. I'm just starting to move a little bit into the thicker bush now. And the lionesses are still lying down in the distance. So I think these youngsters are probably just going to go and join them. But have you been counting of one, two, three, four, five? Um, yes, I think the lionesses would know if the cubs are in distress while while they're hunting. Uh, uh, do you mean? Uh, well, it, it actually all depends if they're close or not. If the if they've left the cubs in an area, say at a den site, and the females are out hunting, no, there's obviously no way they would know if they are in distress or not at the den site. But um, but if they're close by, um, which these young cubs would be, they'd be they'd be following the pride and they'd be left not too far behind if the lionesses are hunting. But um, if, say for example, buffalo, that would probably be the worst case scenario, buffalo turn around and chase the pride. Um, those lionesses would try their best to protect the cubs, but it's not always easy against a big, large buffalo. <laughs> and there they go. Now, as I said, we're going to um, we're going to make some space, and hopefully the other vehicle will get a chance to come in and see these lions for a while. We'll possibly try again later. I'm hoping they stay in the area. I think they will. So let's head back to Tristan and find out how he's search for those buffaloes going.